What is going on, everybody? Welcome to yet another episode of The Rose Show. As always, I am your host, Jay. Who else but me? And today, my guest on this Halloween week is, I mean, who else could I ask for but the very first Jason Voorhees ever, Ari Lehman. It was great to talk to him, a real energetic person, as you'll find out here shortly, but an overall nice guy, and uh, we had a great conversation, and um, it was cool to be able to talk to somebody who has roots so deep like he does, not only in music, um, as you'll find out, but also in uh, you know the horror genre, which is why I wanted to end the five weeks of Halloween with Ari, was because, hey, he was a part of something that launched an entire franchise that we all still talk about today and most of us still love. So, you know, even if you're not a fan of horror, horror in that genre in particular, you still know who Jason Voorhees is, you know, and he was a part of that. So, uh, I, like I said, great chopping it up, with, uh, chopping it up with him. And, um, I really think everybody's going to like it. And if you have been here with me throughout the entire five weeks of Halloween, I appreciate it. Because this is something I didn't know how people were going to respond to. I could have been like, eh, whatever. But I have people asking me, you know, if I'm going to do this again next year. Uh, do I have any plans, um, you know, to do more themes when it comes to months? And I don't know if I could do it every single month, you know, when there's something like I couldn't do an entire thing around Valentine's Day. But, you know, Halloween is a vibe. You know, we'll see what happens when it comes around the Christmas time and how I feel then. But um, I don't know. I don't think I could do this with anything else except for the month of October. But if you've been enjoying it, I appreciate it. And I definitely plan on doing this again next year. Yeah, if I'm able to, because you never know. The one thing I have found when doing this show, you never know when a certain guest is going to be available, number one, but also you never know when the opportunity to talk to him is going to come around. It just so happened that the stars aligned on this one, and I was able to put together something that, you know, had a Halloween theme to it. So um, if I can do it again next year, I will. But uh, I've had a lot of fun. Um, kind of breaks the norm of, you know, doing this the show format, if you will. Um, and uh, I, I, like I said, I had a great time doing it. So look for it again in 2025. But enough of my babble. Let's get into the nitty gritty. But before we get too far into it, let's remind everybody, go ahead and head over to my Patreon. Subscribe. It's 100% free to join at www.patreon.com slash the Rose Show Pod. I'm going to be focusing very heavy on that uh, come uh, next year, 2025, January. Um, that is where I'm going to be doing the most of my promotional work on because it's a lot easier than dealing with algorithms on social media. So it gets directly to you. And by the way, it's free. And it helps me. So what's better than helping me for free? Yeah, I don't see any problem with it. So go ahead and go over there, join up. Um, and I'm, we'll be doing giveaways. Um, I've, I've got uh, some bonus content already posted on there. Um, and uh, like I said, I'm going to be focusing heavy on that. And again, it's free. What do you have to lose? Why do you want to see my shit scroll through social media? Ugh. That's how I feel about social media much anymore. Just ugh. It's a useful tool for what I do here. But anyway, so go ahead and go over there and join. And not only that, wherever you're watching this on or listening this to, uh, uh, on, don't forget to like and subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. That is number one key to help this show out. And not only that, why wouldn't you? This is one of the best shows you watch, right? I mean, probably not. But if I say that, maybe you'll join. <laughs> oh, shit. Sorry. I know. When it comes to promotion, I'm kind of a whore. I'll do anything as long as it gets you to press subscribe or watch or anything. It's kind of a problem I have. Anyway, enough of my babbling. Here is a word from my sponsors and then the interview with the one and only Ari Lehman. Check it out, y'all. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Jay, and I'm here to tell you about my sponsor, W Energy. Now, what is W Energy? Well, I'm going to tell you because I myself use W Energy. Here I've got this Calio cream. It's got a great flavor to it, and not only that, it is clean energy. Energy that's not going to make you crash, not give you the jitters. I've been looking for a reason to drop all my old energy drinks that were unhealthy for me. Too much additives, too much trash in it, too much stuff that's going to make you crash, make you fall asleep at the end of the day not dubby so how can you get your hands on some dubby to try i'm going to tell you how and then i'm going to tell you how to save some money while you do it go to www.w.gg and at checkout type in my new promo code and it is 
who else? That's right. The promo code at www.w.gg is who else? Because, hey, who else but me, your boy Jay? I wouldn't steer you wrong, right? And when you do, make sure you tag your boy. Let me know you got some. You tried it, and I know you're going to love it. All right, everybody, it's time to stop and let you know about today's sponsor of the show, Crazy Martins in Piqua, Ohio, one of my favorite places in the entire world to go to. Crazy Martins has provided their customers with quality products for over 20 years, from ashtrays to water pipes and everything in between. Stop in, check out their selection, and of course, check out their pinball machines. With over 20 pins to choose from, there is something for everyone. Crazy since 1996. I don't just say this about every place. I love going to Crazy Martins. I've always loved going to Crazy Martins ever since I was of age to go to Crazy Martins. It's one of my favorite places in the entire world. Me and my wife go there almost every Sunday to play pinball machines. It is one of the funnest spots in Ohio you could possibly find. It is in Pickwell, Ohio. Check out their website at www.crazymartins.com. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to yet another episode of The Row Show. As always, I'm your host, Jay. Who else but me? And today, my guest is a man of both music and film. Uh, he was the very first person to play in history, uh, a cinema, cinematography, um, the, one of the most iconic roles ever. Uh, he is the front man for the band First Jason because, hey, that's what he was, the very first Jason for. He's, and also, as you could tell, he's a traveling man as well. It is Ari Lehman, my friend. How are we doing today? Jay, Jay, what's up, man? Thank you, thank you. As you can see, bro, I'm here in the beautiful, uh, we're in Massachusetts or New York State now, New York State. Um, we're just coming back from Silver Stream Con in Worcester. We opened for um, Ice Nine Kills in this moment, Avatar at TX2. Very nice, very nice. I was in Worcester. I want to say probably about nine years ago for a convention that used to be called Rock and Shock. And, uh, man, it was a, such a good time. I did Rock and Shock way back, man. Yeah, I did that. Um, wow. It was, um, it was Guar, Lordy, and Typo Negative was there, man. That's, that's a long time ago, you know? Yeah, it was a really, really fun convention. And I loved how they used to do it split. Like you had your horror convention and you had your concert. And it was just such a great time. I was there when I was touring with Twisted. I don't know if you're uh, familiar with them or not. But uh, I was on the road with them. And that's when we made our stop into Wooster. Not only is first Jason open for Twisted and appeared at Astronomicon, which is Twisted's event. We've also done a collaboration, a song called Killing It, which is... Uh, a collaboration between Twisted and First Jason and Alex Vincent from Child's Play and Courtney Gaines from Children of the Corn, as well as Tim Capello, the sax player from Lost Boys. It's a song called Killing It. Yeah. With Twisted. Yeah. Jason and Twisted. It's on Spotify now. You can check it out. I'm definitely going to have to do that. Yeah, I I toured with them uh, both as a touring artist and as an employee of theirs. So uh, we go we go pretty pretty far back. You can see the poster right up here. The tour was called Spooktacular Horror Show Tour. So um, got a lot of love for those guys. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Do you well, do like uh, hip hop kind of thing. No, uh, I was in a band as well. Uh, I was one of the front men. There were two of us. The band was called Menace to Sobriety. Um, we were punk rock, new punk rock, new metal, I guess is what you could call us. So um, we're, unfortunately, we're not really a, a band anymore just because COVID kind of, we were a COVID casualty. We couldn't maintain after the fact. So, but hey, I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, I got to live my dream for a little bit. And uh, like I said, I got to meet my heroes that I looked up to when I was growing up like Twisted. So it was worth it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we just did a show. No, I know exactly what you mean, brother. You know, it's all, it's all, it's all a, uh, it's an ongoing. Uh, it never ends, bro. You know, the journey never ends. Like we, we were just there um, in Massachusetts. Uh, no, in New Hampshire, uh, a couple weekends ago, we got to open for Cottonmouth Kings. 
So they had mm. a whole bunch of that whole scene there. Cottonmouth Kings and Dr. Giggles and that whole vibe. You know, we love that, man. I, I didn't know that that, that was your uh, thing. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's something I've been into my whole life, and I still follow to this day. And even on this show, I've got uh, hitters in the, from from the genre all all throughout this show. So um, it's it's definitely something that uh, that stuck with me my whole life for sure. Well, let's go ahead and and uh, go all, all the way back. I'd like to kind of ask you about your early life and and how you got interested in uh, music. Oh yeah, thank you so much. You know, when I was uh, a kid, so I. Uh, First, I studied piano, and I was really into studying jazz piano as a kid. That I, I got a teacher, and uh, it was really amazing. And then I was drafted up to Bridgeport University while I was still in Staples High School in Westport, Connecticut. Uh, so I started learning jazz, and then when I got, I decided to go to New York University to study jazz, which was great. Because there I was in New York City, you know, where they I could literally go downstairs from my dorm room, right? And I could hear some of the most amazing jazz piano players of all time, like right in my dorm room. I mean, right not in my dorm room, but, <laughs> and, you know, like five minutes from my dorm room. It was nuts. So, um, like I heard McCoy Diner and Barry Harris and Hank Jones and Tommy Flanagan, and I got to watch them do their thing, like, right there, because that's how New York was in the 80s. You still had a lot of jazz musicians, a lot of jazz clubs. It was very popular. There was a place called SOB's Sounds of Brazil. There was the Village Vanguard, the Village Gate. Bradley's was literally on University Place, where New York university is so i would just go and these guys play jazz all all night long it was amazing so um then my first job professionally though was in world music okay i was doing world music right which was very popular in the 90s so i got into a band that was from nigeria west africa okay and yeah i i i um, some of these bands from overseas, you know, they had trouble getting the visas for all their musicians. So I was the guy in New York when they needed somebody to get their musicians together. So I got to play for an artist called Majek Fashek, who was uh, kind of a famous African reggae artist. And so we toured around quite a bit, you know, and um, ultimately... Um, that's when I, I, you know, I got back to New York City and I started looking at what I wanted to do. But then, lo and behold, somebody sent me an email asking me, hey, did you autograph this photo? And I was like, what do you mean? You know, what, what, what photo? You know, and he said, oh, it's a photo of, you know, little Jason jumping out of the lake here, you know, and I said, yeah, yeah, that's, that's me, you know, so he said, basically, I just paid uh, 50 bucks for this on eBay, you know, so I said, that's not my autograph, I didn't sign it, you know, uh, so it turned out someone had been forging my autograph, and that's how I kind of got into the whole horror convention circuit, Way mm. back, yeah, way back, there was a convention at uh, the Meadowlands in New Jersey. And Kane Hodder was there. Um, Betsy Palmer, who played um, Mama for Ease. I met her for the first time there. And uh, Tom Savini was there, who did the makeup. And so that was really cool. And at that time, I had a reggae band. It was like called Ari Ben Moses Band. It was a very world music, like a Jewish reggae band, you know, before Matis Yahoo. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not kidding, man. And, uh, you know, it was like shofars filled with marijuana. It was great. It was awesome. So, 
<laughs> Ultimately, I looked around at the convention and I saw everybody's into metal. Everybody's into punk metal. Because you know every horror fan, I mean, pardon me, every metalhead is a horror fan. Every punk is a horror yeah. fan. Maybe yeah. not. It's very true. Person, very true. But there's, you know, we say horror and metal together forever, baby, right? Alice Cooper, Screaming Jay Hawkins, you name it, man. Um, oh, it's, it's, it's just part of it. Black Sabbath, Ozzy Osbourne. It's part of the great tradition of metal. Because let's face it, horror gets a bad rap, but you see it everywhere in the highest art forms of literature and in the, in the, the religious scriptures. They use horror in mythology. They use horror in Shakespeare. They use horror. They use horror everywhere. So now in metal, what I love about metal is the freedom and the open mindedness. You know, I play a guitar, Jay, and uh, yeah. it's uh like one of the first people to give us a break was um, John McKenty of Incantation. Do you know this man there? A thrash metal yeah. man. But Absolutely. Seriously. Yep. Oh, oh, you do? Oh, cool. Because mm -hmm. not everybody does. You know, I mean, yeah, no, I mean, fucking A. So he invited me and first Jason to be at this event. It's called Carolina Chainsaw Massacre. Okay. And. They had Nuclear Assault. It was a ton of thrash metal bands. It was amazing. So they gave us our, our really... So I got up at a, th bro, at, a th at a thrash metal show playing the guitar. You know, you got to have some balls to do that, let me tell you. And uh, But we had the audience within about 30 seconds in, you know. Because first yeah. case in shreds, bro. We just played for thousands opening for in this moment and ice nine kills and i i gotta say i'm proud of the man here's bc up over here hey how are you and eddie machete eddie machete going the horns out there <laughs> there's eddie in the back yeah so you know we um yeah i'm proud of everybody and you know because it's it's a different kind of show it's a it's a metal band coming out of like a heavy metal motorhead kind of vibe you know um that kind of energy there's a lot of melody a lot of groove a lot of drive and uh it was so gratifying playing for such a large audience man wow that was something else i gotta thank ice night kills for giving us that opportunity but let me say this they set it up and we knocked it down baby. that's right Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So who were your earliest uh, influences in music? Because, again, you said that you were, you, you trained. Jimi Hendrix. Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix. Because my jazz teacher introduced me to Jimi Hendrix. I love Jimi Hendrix just because the way he plays guitar is so unique because he turned it upside down. He's playing it left-handed upside down. So it's like such a unique sound. Um, his lyrics, the way he combines blues and, and rock and funk, okay, big influence on my life. Um, straight up Bob Marley, man. I listened to Bob Marley the whole time when he was producing his albums, and I remember the day he died. Um, God bless him, you know, Bob Marley, um, again. What he did was to bring together so many different sounds. You listen to, like, listen to Survival or you listen to Natty Dread. You listen to his albums, um, Exodus. It's together just epic power and mysticism with, like, funk and blues. He makes funk, like, a divine message. It's amazing. But it's, you know, again... I was also influenced by Earth, Wind, and Fire, man. Stevie Wonder, um, James Brown, all of that music, big time. I got into Yes. I got into Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. You know, big time. Uh, Jethro Tull. And then 
It was it. That was it. King Crimson, yeah. man. King Crimson, bro. And then I would listen to Discipline every day driving to high school in my little Audi Bit Bob in Westport, Connecticut, Scooby Doo. Yeah, man. Oh, I was so into it. Just forget it, man. So I, I wanted to touch on something real quick because I, I haven't got a chance to speak about this at all. It really bothers it bothers me that it seems like the world has forgotten how amazing Earth, Wind, and Fire was, and the fact yeah, that you brought it, like, the fact that you brought them up, like I, I, I it truly bothers me because the musicianship in that band alone, untouchable, absolutely untouchable, and it seems like from what you told me. Your palette when it comes to music is very wide. And, and I'm the exact same way. Anybody who's watched this show for five seconds knows like my, my musical palette is out there uh, on the spectrum. You play my Spotify, there's everything from pop, hip hop, metal, obviously, um, everything, everything. And uh, man, I'm giving the full confession here. I'm not sure. trying to hide it and say, oh, you know, I'm into this and that, you know, full confessions. I mean, you know. I'm into all kinds of rock too, but I was introduced to the uh, more death metal and 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 uh, thrash after um, I worked together with um, the, the the bass player from from Macabre was in First Jason for uh, a brief time, and he's on two of the albums, and he turned me on to all kinds of music, you know. Uh, just just everything like from devil driver to gojira mm. and all that stuff too man but you know i'm a prog dude i love prog i just like when people stretch the limit i love melody i just think melodies are so important i was saying that to spencer that that's why people really love his music because if you listen to ice nine kills for all the uh fireworks and uh artillery that's going on every one of his songs has a has a melody you know right and uh they all have a melody you can remember the song that i got to sing on has a beautiful melody um thank god it's friday so i i just believe in that now there's bands that use all kinds of different approaches like the the show we did on saturday there was first, first Jason, which is like a punk metal approach. And then there was TX2, who's almost like a rap metal approach. And then there was Avatar from Norway. The Avatar. And they did like this circus madness, which yeah. was amazing. And then uh, there was... Um, in this moment so in this moment i don't know if you've seen them oh yeah oh okay so i was watching them and i was trying to figure it out it's like you know the lead singer doesn't move you know she doesn't move so she's like i mean she moves but she doesn't run around the stage like most and then i looked at the lighting and how they have uh you know the air blowing through their hair and clothes. And I realized it's model metal, bro. It's model metal. They're like models perfectly posing. And as right. soon as I as soon as I thought of that, it makes sense, like in this moment. Like the, mm. the, picture, the picture's being taken of this moment. So I get it, you know, I get it. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. There's so many different approaches to it. It's amazing. So, but having the name First Jason and you being First Jason, have you ran into any trademark issues? Because there, there's, it's infamous that there's been some issues in, in the recent uh, couple of years, like with the video game, Friday the 13th video game. Uh, there's been trademark issues there. Have you ran into any of that, presenting your product the way that you do? You need to be caught up, brother. Is that you got the story a little mixed up there. Okay, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. They, they owe me a lot of money. I oh, okay. Employees has not gotten residuals, and they're very aware of their the fact that they've made a lot of money and haven't paid 
me what I'm owed. And okay. what you said about the video game is wrong, too. Because what okay. happened is not that. What happened is that Victor Miller, the writer, for 35 years was was not given residuals either. So mm. he was allowed to challenge that by law, and he won that lawsuit, okay? And so now he gets his residuals. That's all that happened. The fact that they made a video game prior to that decision meant that during that decision, they had to stop the video game because they didn't know what was going to happen. I was literally taking pictures with Sean Cunningham two days ago. It's like me and Sean are tight. It's not like there's any kind of animosity or anything like that. I'm sure. Jason Voorhees, and yeah, they used my image in part four and never, like all, all the, yeah, part one, two, and four. Part one, two, and four, they use all the same footage from part one, but they never paid me for part four. Nowadays, uh, using a horror movie as a subject matter is 100% permitted. There's nothing wrong with that mm. in any way. I mean, Ice Nine Kills, bro, every song they do is about a different horror franchise. They do a Jaws song. They do a Michael Myers song. They do a song about Texas Chainsaw. They do a song about every horror franchise. That's interesting. All right, cool. Well, um, I also... Why, Go ahead. Why do people make up fake limitations? That's a great point. That's a great point. In life, bro. Great problem. You can't play guitar, metal. Well, I fucked that shit over. I show people, why aren't you? I'm the only one doing it. Why is that? It's so fucking fun and easy. There should be more people to take your guitar, put it through a motherfucking distortion pedal. Jeez Louise. That's a great point, my man. And it I'll tell you something that happened uh, when I was in New York City. There was an audition at CBGB's. Okay? Okay. And I was doing this, uh, you know, I wasn't doing metal yet. Back then, I was, because I came out of my funky, I was, I, I was also really into Sly Stone and James Brown. And, uh, so I was doing some white boy funk thing, you know. And, you know, I thought it was the shit and whatever. This, that, the other thing. And other people thought it was good, too. But so I went to the CBGB's audition, right? Okay. And it was like outdoor CBGB's audition, right there outdoors. Okay, the guy himself, Hilly Crystal, Hilly motherfucking Crystal, is sitting at a desk, and we're all coming up to him with our cassettes. For real, bro. Okay? And there was this chick from NYU who knew me, and she's like, oh, you should get Ari, you know, Ari's... Oh, he's good. Da, da, da. Um, so I walk up with my cassette and he hears it and he looks at me and he just goes, white boy funk. And then I'm like, uh, you know, I'm like looking at my feet. I'm like, he goes, look at me. You got a good look. You got a good sound, but, but you got to learn one thing. And I said, what's that? He goes, you want to do something, you got to grab people by the balls. <laughs> Absolutely. I was, shocked, man. I was a little kid from Connecticut at that point. <laughs> and that shocked me, man. I, I, I'm a bit, man. I'm standing there, uh, you know, in the East Village, in the Bowery, and he's outside with my little cassette. He's, you got to grab people by the balls, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking to, awesome. To meet, uh, have you ever heard of Reagan Youth? It's a I don't band. think so, no. Mm -mm. Oh, there's a great punk band. They're delightful. They're so good. So, yeah, go listen to them. They got so many great songs. Go Nowhere, uh, Miss Teen America. Oh, that's a great song. Uh, but what a great band. So they got a guitar player called Paulie, but they have a lead singer. They used to have, his name was Dave, and he was called Dave Insurgent. He was Reagan Dave. So Reagan Dave used to sell me weed, too, right? 
So I was at NYU, and he would come over to my place. And also, him and his girlfriend used to like to, uh, well, I don't know. They would they would hang out on the couch and listen to me play jazz piano in the basement, you know. Uh, so I would play jazz. He was into it. So then he would say, come on, man. And he brought me over to... Uh, Oh, CBGB's and um, Limelight, which was a, used to be a church, and um, oh, all these places. But we got, to, I got to see um, White Zombie, you know, um, mm. Sean, you saw the, the, the chick bass player, and, and to me, that was like, it was like I was looking at people from outer space, like the way that Rob Zombie dressed, like that tribal was like tribal techno just badass look and you know i was like a, a, a preppy <laughs> preppy kid from connecticut you know and um uh, and at that time the beastie boys oh a little later were happening and at my um i saw bad brains i saw um dead kennedys and then oh wow and, and then all this shit happened like Hip hop happened, so, and you know, I, I, I've always loved. I've done, I've done, so many different types of recordings. When you look at it, I've worked with like Eagle Eye Cherry, who did that song. You know, I've worked with so many different people. Um, but I, you know, I'll admit it. When, um, when I finally put my guitar through a distortion box, <laughs> and felt, felt that feeling, man. You know, I, there was no looking back. It was like. They unleashed the beast. It was like Godzilla had been let out and there was no turning back. So really what I wanted to do was to streamline the sound, right? I knew I had to streamline it because uh, musically, as a keyboardist, we tend to be a little bit elaborate, you know? I didn't want to do like a Jordan Rudis kind of thing, dream theater. I love that. I love it. I love it all day long, but that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do something that was more like a freaky pirate punk on acid outer space Jason Rock. You know, just Right. That's awesome. Freaky freaky pirate rock on acid. That's <laughs> that's a perfect explanation. You gotta put outer space engine. You know, it's like Sun Ra. It's like Sun Ra for horror metal yeah sure and uh in my research i also saw that you have a line of hot sauce as well is that right yeah man we got three hot sauces <laughs> i am a huge hot sauce fan i literally put hot sauce on everything so please tell me about it all right oh good no we, we um they're all natural they're made in florida where the peppers are grown so they're just so delicious the first one is slasher sauce which is a ghost pepper sauce with red habanero onion garlic turmeric cumin oh it's just it's so mustard it's so good it's so good uh it's just very flavorful yeah i guess you'd call it a caribbean style and that's our medium hot then uh we came out with one called blood of the lake which is your cajun style you know slopping sauce which you can really, you know, that kind of a vibe where it's not so hot that you can, you can enjoy it, you know, in mm. that kind of way, just pour it all over sort of sauce. Then we came up with one after they, they did that um, hot things or whatever it's called, you know. Um, so that one's our super hot sauce. Uh, basically, uh, uh, our drummer made up the name for that one because we have a song nice. called Heat My, Heat My Warning. So we call it Heat My Warning. And that one is, um, it's a fruit-based sauce, so it's like sweet, but it uses the oil of cayenne. So it's like, I just put a little bit on the plate, you know, you just put a little on the plate and uh, it's so hot, man, yeah. But it's addictive. Yeah. I'm gonna have to check that out. Cause I, like I said, I love hot sauce, yeah. That one's made with peaches. Yeah, it's delicious. 
Wow. Interesting. Well, in closing, um, I just want to say, man, I, I've got a lot of respect for, for the hustle. Um, obviously you've done, uh, uh both film and music and you've been very successful at it uh i saw that they, they uh actually i got the idea to want to interview you because i saw you did lethal weekend seven and uh, again going all the way back to the beginning of this Real, bro. yeah 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 um and uh going all the way back man, that's so cool are you in that exactly area, man? i am not i am in i am in ohio i am in ohio so but i i know all those people well well you know I was just going to say, man, if you, if you see we're at an event and you want to come and do interviews and we'll get you a press pass and just holler at me, man, you know? Hey, that would be awesome. That would be awesome for sure. But I always give the last couple of minutes of the interview to my guest. If there's anything you would like to plug, uh, social media, website, anything like that, I'm going to go ahead and turn the floor over to you, my man. Well, you know, I just want to reiterate what I was saying before about – you know how sometimes horror gets a bad rap but like let's look at the great literature out there in the first scene of hamlet hamlet's father comes from beyond the grave as a ghost and says to him i want you to avenge my death my murder most foul because your mother is now sitting on the throne and sleeping with my brother, and he's the one who murdered me. And, and and Hamlet says, why must I? Is this the flame that I must bear? And he, he says, yes, yes, he, he has to, he has to avenge his father's death. And then look at the whole play, Ophelia's suicide, and the ending, they just all kill each other. I mean, look, that's just one example about how horror is really just everywhere and um we should just get over it and and embrace embrace the dark side and embrace the fact that if you want to tell a story there's probably no better way of telling that story and you know what is it that we're doing all the time is we're just telling stories you know whether you're doing a podcast or you're doing a a, a fictional tale of a little boy who, who lived under under the water and a, and a mother who loved her son so much, she just lost her head. Thanks. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for your time, my man. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Jason never dies.